So I'm really into aviation. And one of the great mysteries of my lifetime is D.B. Cooper, who parachuted out of a 727 that was going from Portland to Seattle and had a bunch of money uh, after he hijacked the plane. He hasn't ever been seen. There is now a clue that may tell us who D.B. Cooper really was. This all starts November 24th, 1971, with a guy who calls himself Dan Cooper. And he gets on a plane in Portland, Oregon, and en route to Seattle, he tells them he has a bomb. So they land in Seattle. They do let the passengers of the plane off in Seattle, but he demands $200,000 and several parachutes, and he gets it, right? They give it to him back on the plane. The plane takes off again towards Reno. And about 45 minutes into the flight, he puts the parachute on, grabs the money, has the back door of the 727 open, jumps out, and is never heard from again. This is the 70s, and the first generation of hostage takings, they used to pay up. They, they did pay up. To. Okay, so fast forward. So there have been all these theories about him, that he died when he landed, that he didn't die, that he got away with it, that he was spending the money. And nobody's ever been able to figure out. So around like 1980, a child was digging through a fire pit on the beach in the Columbia River, which is like north of Portland. And the kid found $5,800. And then when they actually looked at the cash, they realized the serial numbers on that cash were linked to what D.B. Cooper was doing. So, you know, he may have not spent all the money if they found that cash. He may have not survived. He may not have survived. May not have survived, but now there's a big clue. The one thing he left behind on the plane was a clip-on tie, a black tie, with a little tie clip on it. Um, so that has now undergone um, through the lab. And what they found was, uh, steel, very high pressurized steel and titanium dust on it. Very unique. It's not something that you would just find going to a regular steel plant or whatever. And so they've, they've traced it back to the Crucible Steel, a company that is no longer um, operational, but that was a steel factory that made steel for airplanes, Boeings in particular. And so they believe uh, D.B. Cooper would have had to have been somebody who worked at that factory. But that seems too convenient to me because he seemed like a smart guy. Why would he just leave the tie behind? So here's Vince, and this is what he looks like, the sketch of what the witnesses saw. You have to admit there's some pretty good similarities. Have you seen the other sketches and the other suspects? It like really goes No, down. no, but this place is him in a factory that made metal that was found on his tie, and there was only a handful of engineers that would have been wearing ties. Now, I think about 100 or less people no. there who it could have been. So the fact that he was one of those people is really compelling. Did his did, does he have relatives that talk? His son. That's what his I would want. His, his son, son doesn't believe that he did this. He's like, my dad was a good guy, and I didn't know him to How could you believe it? It's an unbelievable thing. He jumped from a plane in a storm and lived. There are certain conspiracies right. suggesting he maybe had an accomplice as well. He didn't work alone in this. Yeah, but how do you have an accomplice if you're jumping out of a plane? That's what the, that's the mystery. Maybe no, I mean, they're it's on the like, ground and they don't have. Maybe they're part of the tower and they're working in the ground. Maybe yeah, but how are they going like, to how are they going to find him? There were no cell phones then. Troops. They had a thousand troops over 36 hours just doing a total grid search of the area. Okay, within the first few days and didn't find a body. Okay, he survived. Well, not finding a body is, is an entire No, but no body, no parachute, no evidence of a crash landing. I mean, that's compelling. I mean, at a point, though, they would have found the body. I mean, if, if, if he died there, they would have found the body. So, okay, so walk me through the actual survival then. He jumps out of a plane, cannot navigate, cannot traverse the sky. It's pouring, it's dark. He has no idea where he's going, and he just crash lands into a tree. But he is crashing. Claps himself down. He's How do you know that he crash landed in a tree? We don't we know don't that. Know. He's jumping into a mountainous forest, so I mean, there are only so many like clear Maybe patches. Maybe his profile said like he's a survivalist, like he's somebody who knows how to survive. It was, it was pouring rain. Yeah, there were several copycats after this, and they did survive. Yeah. Mm. So it, I tend you know, to think that he probably had some experience, though. He could have trained beforehand. Isn't this the only unsolved hijacking in the yes. world? Yes. That's that's in the world or just the U.S.? U.S. history. Probably the U.S. The US. US. That is sick. Not great. Good for him. That's why this is so interesting. <laughs> it is. <Yeah. laughs>